a viewer of mine the other day seen that I used a Prezic knot in one of my videos and said that they were going to go check through my videos and find a video on knots. I have never made one. Myself, I've only used five knots. That, I, that That's all I ever use out here. That's all I've ever needed. And I'm going to show you those five knots. Got this big line so you can see it easier. And the first knot I'm going to show is a classic granny knot. You go around your tree and basically this is the same thing as tying a knot in your sneaker. You go under and pull. Take the other one, go under and through and pull. That's your basic granny knot. We'll do it once more. So you go around your tree, you're going to go over top, under, and pull. This one, you go over top again, under, and pull. Now that is your classic granny knot. I use that a lot, tell you the truth. And I'm just showing you these. If they're not well explained, then you can look at other resources because I'm going to tell you the names of them that you can look them up. And you may find someone or something that gives you better instruction. The next one, I'm, one that I'm going to go to is the Canadian Jam Knot. This is a slip knot. I use that a lot as well. Now, for the Canadian Jam Knot, it's according to what I'm going to do, but I use that a lot because it's a cinch knot, a slip knot. So what you do first off is you put a, just fold it over and go in through and pull. So the same thing is a start of a granny knot. Pull it tight. That gives you your knot. Now, take this, pull it up. What you're going to do is go over, under, like this. And then it's going to go over and through here. So basically, you're just going to go around this and in through. But you want that knot to go in through like this. And then when you pull this, you have basically the same thing as you had here, but now this slips. Now the Canadian jam part is when you tighten this up, it will slip back and fetch up and jam against this knot. This here cannot pull through. It's a very good slip knot and I use it a lot. Now with this knot, I'm going to show you how to do a lashing. Got three sticks here. This here would be how you make a tripod. I'm going to take this Canadian jam knot, put it around, and slip that up until it fetches up. Now I had left this tag end on for tying off in the end. That's why I'll always leave a tag end on this knot. Now you put these together, just hold them like this. Don't, don't, you don't have to put it tight. Now just wrap it around three times. Now once you have it wrapped around, then you go up and through that one there, and then all the way around and up the other side. Do that again. Two times, and then you're going to bring it back, go around, and go into this one, and then around, up in, down, and up in. Now what I'll do is bring this back around. And 
what I'll do normally, since I have this tight end, I'll just bring this around this way, in through, down, up, back into here, back up and around, and then just tie off with a granny knot. That's the way I normally do my tripods. And then you have a tripod. But that's what it looks like. Now that lashing, you can use many different ways to tie a lot of wood together and other objects. It's a very good thing to know. Now the next one I'm going to show I use for fishing and it's a modified clinch knot. Now this one is how you, I tie a hook to my fishing line. We're going to use this basically as a hook but what you're going to do is take a bite in your line like this here. So you have two ends. That's going to go through your hook. Say that's your hook. Now what you're going to do is twist this up about five times. Now what this is called is an improved clinch knot. Now that that's twisted up, this wants to go over this way here. Well, you let it go over, and what you do, as you can see this one, is over like this. You bring this to this side, the side that's under. Bring it up through here, up through. So, the side that's under, you bring it under, up through, and then back through all of this like that and then you pull tight and what that does is it slides down and that knot <laughs> never slips if you just use the, the uh, clinch knot, I have had it slip through. This one will break your line before it will ever uh, slip through. And try that once more. She's tight on there. And like I said, if this is not clear how I'm doing this, Check other sources. I've given you the names. So, what I'm going to do again is I'm just going to start twisting. Put a nice bite on this. Start twisting about five times. It doesn't matter really. I just twist it. I don't count usually. And now, here's your... This time I twisted this way. So... This one on this side is the underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this whole thing up and go in through and around. And then I want to go through all this. So you can see that's around there. And then just in through here. And then pull it tight. And then, of course, you're going to cinch it up. But, of course, when you use this fishing line, it works no problem. So you can see how that just cinches up. And that there is a really good knot to know. Now, the last one is the Prusik knot. I'm going to show you how to use that. That comes in really handy when I'm stringing and setting up shelters. If I'm between two trees and my shelter isn't wide enough to tie to two trees, I can just put a ridge line, put a Prusik on that side and a Prusik on that side, 
and just pull it tight with those. I'll show you how it works. So I've got a length of rope here. What I want to do is take these two ends and just tie an overhand knot basically into both of them. That would be the start of a granny knot. So I've got that like this. Now what I want to do is tie this onto a line so I can use this to adjust. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, put it up underneath. I'm going to take the rest of it and put it down through this hole. Put it up, put it down through again. And the third time, same thing. And then I'm just going to pull it tight. That is my present knot. Now how this works is you can slip this back and forth, but when you put tension on it, it will tighten up on itself, and then it will hold. So you can put a lot of pressure on this knot. You can see how it fetches right up once you get it tight, but you can still move it where you want to. So that's great for setting up and tightening up tarps. So well, there you have it. That's the knots that I've used now throughout life while I'm out doing my bushcrafting, my survival training, and so on. Hope this helps a few people, and it's pretty windy out here. Thanks a lot.